thanks for joining us at Right On Replicas, where we're proud to bring you the best premium scale model kit reviews on the planet. This review covers the reissued 1938 Ford Custom Van Kit. It's a 124 scale Lindbergh model, number 73064. It's a skill level 3 kit, requiring glue and paint, and it has about 85 parts molded in white, chrome, and clear. The tires are vinyl, and it also includes water slide decals. The instructions are easy to read, a pictorial design, and the parts and the paint callouts are all noted in the instructions. Construction starts a little differently than with most kits, with the interior and body, and then concludes with the motor and the chassis. Now this is a dedicated custom build with no extra parts in the kit. When you're done, it'll be about 7 inches long, 3 inches wide, and 2 and 3 quarter inches high. Here's the layout of this kit's contents. Now, some people would call this an open box review. They'd open the box and pull out the trees and try to describe the parts if they could find the words, but that won't help you get the kit built. That's what we're going to do. So, we're going to use uh, Model Masters clear liquid cement, and typically though, uh, super glue is used for strength, and uh, white glue or clear glue is used for the windows. But remember, Always follow the manufacturer's safety and use guidelines when using any of the products you see here in the review. Here are the decals for this kit. And as you can see, the registry is pretty good, but there's very little in the way of color variation. We also had some trouble with these decals, which we'll describe later on. But in any case, when you have large decals like this, I strongly recommend that you use a decal setting solution to try and help them conform to contours on the body and stick well. Pull these pieces out so we can get started with the interior. Paint the floor flat black and a tan console will complement the uh, tan walls. The seats are tan with flat black inserts and then the door panels I painted tan with flat black highlights. The shifter is, has a black knob on it and installed the door panels, the seats and the shifter into place. Now we'll get out the major body pieces and we'll prepare them for painting. Remove any blemishes with sandpaper, and then wet sand the whole thing with about a thousand grit sandpaper. Now use a good quality primer and prime the inside and outside of the parts. I used a white primer because I wanted to brighten the color of the color coat that I was going to use. So for this job, I'll be using Gravity Colors paint uh, GC-227 hobby paint and this is a multiple stage paint meaning you put down a base coat and you use your clear coats for sheen. The metal flakes uh, are more correctly sized than regular automotive metal, metal metallic paints so it sprays nicely. I, I like this paint. So uh, whatever paint you're using go ahead uh, after you've had a chance to clean it up from the primer and give it your color coats and then use some uh, once again uh, some fine sandpaper to finish it out and then we'll top coat it later on. Well as you noticed everything was going along just fine up to this point. We're going to put the decals on now and this particular kit has a couple of very large decals that go on the nose and the hood panels and as you can see they did not fit well. I'm not quite sure how they're designed but they don't work like they should according to the box art. Uh, my recommendation is that you either forego these particular decals or find some in your stash uh, or from some other aftermarket product to use here. Um, these don't seem to fit well and even if they uh, were properly sized I think they'd be difficult to uh, get to conform to those curves. Nonetheless, uh, if you can get them on, on and use them, hey, kudos to you. Uh, but I went ahead and uh, made a change uh, with this front decal to try and emulate the box art. So since I could not get these uh, decals to lay down properly, I just cut out a template and then uh, I painted uh, the drip effect onto the hood and the fender panels uh, by masking the rest of the, uh, the vehicle and using a uh, template mask uh, made of tape uh, to put down something that looks similar to the original decals. Once that's done and they've cured overnight, uh, including the door panel decals, go ahead and clear coat your model to bring out that shine. 
We'll grab some of these uh, parts uh, out of the kit now, and the uh, back and the side panels uh, are installed into the interior, and they're colored uh, a tan color to match. And the dash is tan, and the instruments uh, are black with some white uh, highlighting. Then the column is tan, and the wheel is black. Now install the steering column and wheel into the dash. Once you've uh, gotten the uh, uh, interior uh, painted and it's fully cured, we can start to work on some more of the uh, interior parts here. So uh, add the glass to the interior of the body um, using some uh, either clear glass cement or some white glue uh, so that it dries clear. And then install the dash into the interior of the body and the interior tub then goes into the body. Get these parts together to assemble the engine and then put the transmission together and paint that aluminum. The block is then assembled with the heads, the valve, and the valve covers. Then add the oil pan, intake, and timing covers. Now paint the motor purple uh, to complete that custom look. The belt is a rubber color with black pulleys and the water pump uh, and alternator are aluminum. The starter is black and gold and the oil filter is orange. Add the oil filter, starter, belt with the alternator and water pump and then add the transmission. Now we can work on the uh, chassis. So paint the chassis aluminum. The front A arms uh, then are assembled and the rear axle is a, a semi-gloss black and then uh, install the A arms and the rear axle to the chassis. Gather these parts for assembly and the springs uh, are flat black with a steel uh, for the highlighted uh, ribs and then the brakes are aluminum with red calipers. Uh, the A arms and the rear suspension and tie rod are semi gloss black and the drive shaft is aluminum. Now the floor is flat black. Now install the front springs and the A arms and the front brakes. Then install the rear suspension, tie rod, springs and brakes. Install the exhaust manifolds onto the motor and add the motor into the chassis onto uh, the mounts there with the drive shaft in place. Now add the floor pan too. I like to give the tires a uh, worn look uh, like they're uh, street used and uh, these are nice tires and wheels so I'm going to use a sheet of fine sandpaper around a 220 grit to press and roll the tread of the tire on that and it'll rough up the surface of the tread uh, giving it a worn look. And now these tires are both uh, size and directional specific. Uh, the fronts are smaller than the rears. And install the rims into the tires. And then uh, from this diagram with the arrows, um, install them in the proper directions when you mount them. Now insert a tire uh, onto each axle a pin on the, on the, lar the larger ones go on the rear and the smaller ones go on the front. And uh, once again, note the direction of travel as these are uh, directional tires. So make sure that they uh, have the point of the tread uh, contacting the pavement first as you're going forward. That's your uh, cue for directional orientation. Uh, the kit supplies a long piece of uh, plastic strip here that goes from side to side between the sides on the body to support the body's sides and keep them separated properly. So um, install that and then glue the body to the fenders. Get these parts out and paint the rear panel and the front panel body color and the radiator flat black. Now install the radiator and add the front and rear panels into place. Add the exhaust pipes uh, and the rear pipes as well. Grab these parts out of the kit and paint the grill flat black. The firewall is body color and the radiator hose is flat black as well as the fuel intake. The brake booster is a semi-gloss black. Now install the booster and the master cylinder into the firewall and add the firewall to the car. Then add the fuel intake and hose, install the grill and paint the headlight bezels chrome and the area on the body chrome behind the headlights and add the headlights. Now add the hood. I wanted to personalize my custom Ford, so I printed out my logo uh, as a license plate, sized it up, and printed it uh, on some plain paper with a color inkjet printer. Then I just used a piece of tape over it uh, and glued it into place with some white glue. There aren't many uh, parts left, 
uh, just a custom plate that I didn't use and uh, some braces and trappings uh, but other than that uh, it, it's a pretty complete build uh, dedicated parts for this uh, particular model well there you have it it was actually a pretty nice build uh, nothing was really very difficult and the fit and finish for the parts was quite nice uh, when you're done with it it's a really cool looking uh, car uh, with the uh, panel uh, wagon look and the motor looks really nice and is well detailed the chassis is simplified but it builds easily and uh, it's pretty solid once it's done despite just being a ladder job the interior is sparse though and uh, it's simplified but um, it doesn't show hardly anyway and the body was straight and smooth with very little to no blemishes and flash now the parts count as low but that's because it's a dedicated model but if you'd like a custom for your shelf buy one and build it we hope you like this step-by-step -step premium model kit review and so that you don't miss any more please subscribe to our YouTube channel but as always you can find us on Facebook and at our website www.rightonreplicas.com thanks